If they can find the road, they'll eat it. We had four feet of snow the last two winters, and if they can dig their nose into it, they will eat it, and a small row will get lost. So we went from 12 feet with a hay bind to 30 feet with a big swather. On a stormy day, we'll feed the cows. It isn't that they can't eat, it's that they won't go out in the wind. We're on a hill and the wind blows so hard they won't go out there. We learned a few years back to bale the outside rounds on the field. It just makes it harder to get to that outside round if you get a hard drift. There was times when the swaths would get, uh, get snow covered and, uh, and at times get, get iced up. And we found that we could actually open those swaths up by supplementing the pellets on top of the swath with the feed dispenser. And after the cattle had, had cleaned up the pellets, they had broke the crust enough that they would just stay in that same area and continue grazing on the swaths. Grazing through environmental uh, concerns like too much snow and too much wind, I think those are things that you can probably deal with, but one of the most important things is to grow a big crop so that when they're going for it, they get something. The limiting factor for us in swath grazing would be ice and, and crusty snow. And I think that's the, the number one thing that we would, would stop us from swath grazing because snow and a big crop, it, it won't stop them. The cows like the triticale too much. They'll go through a lot of snow to get to it. And even like with the snow, I mean, if we go out with a loader or something, we'll just kind of peel back an, enough snow for them to get to find where the, the, the swath is and they'll just follow the, the uh, windrow down the line and push the snow out of the way and clean it up. Yep, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing actually. The snow has never been a limiting thing on, on bunches because they're, they're in a pile. They start out about two or three feet high and they'll settle down but I've never seen it when cows in this area wouldn't drill down through the snow to go into those bunches. You get another snow, they're back down, drilling down into the bunch again and the snow on it just makes it more palatable for them to eat. Uh, you have to really watch that uh, you know, when you get those January or midwinter thaws, uh, that snow doesn't pack up and get hard. So you, you have to watch the cows, watch their body condition and, and watch their behavior and, and monitor the, the quality and the quantity of the snow. The important thing um, when grazing cattle out in the winter, in deep snow, in cold conditions, you have to be absolutely ready to feed the cows the very next day. Um, you have to have the feed in place. You can't go looking for it at that time. We like to use bale graze for those cows. I mean, we haven't found snow deep enough yet to stop us from bale grazing. So we know if it, it might just be a simple matter of going out, getting the cows, putting them into the field where the bales are. Um, we know if there's, a, if there's a problem out there, we can address it in 24 hours. If it hits minus 25 for a few days, I'll get out there and give them pretty much all they want. I, I want to keep them really full because, yeah, they can lose a, a lot of condition in a week. Last winter we had uh, lots of snow and uh, I was a little worried about the cows getting to the bales there was in spots there would be just a tip of a bale sticking out but beside the bale there would be a three foot circle all the way around there would be no snow at all so a cow had to slug like crazy to get to that spot but once she got to the bale she had a good clear maybe not get 10 cows around the bale but you could get seven or eight cows comfortably around the bale without all that snow in there and then they would eat that bale just to nothing. We started to see a few years ago when the snow got deep uh, you know, a foot and a half, two feet deep, that those cows are starting to bunch up a little bit. And originally we thought, well, geez, maybe they're not eating. Uh, uh, you know, we better bring them in. And we went out there and what we realized is they were working as a herd. And, and one cow would follow another cow around and, and graze where she disturbed the snow and opened the grass up. So they, they, they started to develop that, that different type of behavior where they wanted to be together, whether it was by design or just by luck, uh, they were able to open up a lot of snow. And as long as the snow is soft, you know, go out there and kick some snow around. Are, are you able to kick it around? Can you find grass underneath? If you have to, get to take a shovel to get through the snow, she's going to be working too hard to, to get what she needs. You know, a normal winter in this country, we have about, uh, in my reckoning, about six weather stress days a, a winter where it's so cold and windy that they don't really want to be out there. Those six weather stress days of winter aren't enough to tip the scales. Now, last winter was 36 days. We fed extra bales and plowed snow and 
played all sorts of games to try and get them through. We ended up getting an irrigation tool that's used to, to fill in the furrows on a pivot irrigation. Instead of closing, we, we flipped those discs around so it would open. And I could drive that down the swath and, and cut through that six or eight inches of hard pan snow and pop that snow off of the swath and then the calves could get to it. So we're pretty determined to find a way to make it work. You're not gonna back us off just because of one bad winter. And we did get through that winter. 